Hi, this is Dr. Amy Tutor of The Skeptical OB. I write a lot about home birth and comparing home birth death rates to hospital death rates. I get the hospital death rates from the CDC Wonder database, as do many other researchers. I've explained many times in print how to find the relevant statistics, but it's very hard to follow, so I thought perhaps making a, a small video would help people understand where the statistics come from and allow them to check the statistics themselves. If we go to the CDC Wonder bit database at wonder.cdc.gov, we start by searching on linked birth infant death records right here. It's important to understand that linked birth infant death records are not merely birth certificates. As it says here, information from death certificates has been linked to corresponding birth certificates. And this provides a highly valid form of record keeping. So suppose we want to know what was the death rate for low risk births in the years 2007 to 2010. We'd start by clicking here, takes us to a consent form that explains the data use restrictions. We can agree and then we can begin. Now when we're looking at home births, we want to compare it to a sample that's as close as possible to the home birth sample. And we also want to look at death rates by place of birth, whether they're in the hospital or at home, and by medical attendant. Is it a doctor? a CNM, Certified Nurse Midwife, or a non-nurse midwife. There's also a category for other, which is unattended home births. So if we're going to look at the data comparing home births and hospital births for the years 2007 to 2010, we start by selecting the birthplace and the medical attendant, because that's the how we want the information organized. We want to look at the entire United States, but we don't want to look at everybody. We want to try to match the home birth group to the closest demographic possible. The first thing we need to do is check white race. Well over 90% of home birth mothers are white, and since they have a significantly lower neonatal mortality rate than women of African descent, it makes sense to use the white rate. We don't care about the marital status. We want to look at low-risk women. So that means we want to look at women starting at age 20 and extending up to age 44. To capture multiple years, you click on the place where you want to begin, hold the shift key down, and click on the place where you want to end. We don't care about educational status. We do want, want to look only at term deliveries. Starting at 37 weeks, again hold the shift up to 42 weeks or more. We don't care about prenatal care, but we do care about weight. We only want to look at normal sized babies. The baby is severely growth restricted. That's not a low risk pregnancy. So we start at 2,500 grams, go all the way up to the maximum. We want to look at single births, not multiple births, because most home births are single births. We're going to look at all locations, all delivery methods, and all medical attendants. In this particular exercise, we're not going to look at causes of death, we're just going to look at all deaths. Now, we want to look at neonatal mortality, and that's death from the time of birth up to 27 days after birth. If we wanted to look at infant mortality, we'd also include days 28 up to 364. But for the purposes of home birth statistics, we're going to just look at neonatal mortality. So we start with deaths that occur under an hour of age, hold the shift key, and up to 27 days. In this exercise, we're going to look at all years and all genders. Infant mortality is going to be expressed as deaths per thousand. And now that we've set it all up, we just press send and it gives us a table. And you'll see that the table is divided into births in the hospital and births outside of the hospital. And it tells us the attendant, the deaths, the number of births, and the death rate, which is the deaths divided by the number of births. So if you look, for example, at doctors 
delivering patients in the hospital. In the years 2007 to 2010, there were 4,797 deaths out of a total of 8,424,301 births for a death rate of 0.57 per thousand. Of course, in the MD group, we're going to have all the women who are high risk, and we want to lower the risk as much as possible. So it makes sense to look instead at certified nurse midwives delivering patients in the hospital because these patients are presumably going to be lower risk. Certified midwives working in a hospital can deliver patients with certain medical complications, but the more seriously ill patients are going to be in the MD group. So if we look at the CNM group, we find there were 244 deaths out of a total of 762,004 births for a death rate of 0.32 per thousand. Now let's look at women who gave birth at home. There are midwife births at home, 42,465, of which 34 babies died for a death rate of 0 0.80 per thousand. So that's more than double the death rate that you find when certified nurse midwives work in the hospital. But what about home birth midwives who aren't certified nurse midwives? They're in this category, other midwives. Out of 60,000 births they attended during those years, there were 82 deaths for a death rate of 1.36 per thousand. In other words, the death rate for home birth midwives delivering patients at home is more than four times higher, more than 300 percent higher, in other words, than certified nurse midwives working in the hospital. This category, other, refers to unplanned home births and unattended home births. You can see that's much higher. We do all our comparisons with this group, which is attended home births, and they're attended by other midwives. How do we know that the midwife was really there? We know because she signed the birth certificate, so these must be planned home births. So that's how you find out the death rates, the neonatal death rates, for home and hospital and different kinds of providers. It's important to keep in mind that the Statistics are collected based on where the baby is born, and so any home births that resulted in a transfer before the baby is born, the baby, whether born alive and surviving or born alive and subsequently dying, is going to be in the hospital group. So this figure that we found of 4.2 times higher death rate at home birth actually undercounts the risk of death at home birth because some of the deaths are erroneously removed from the home birth group. I hope this helps everyone understand how these statistics are obtained. And it's really important to know because a lot of researchers are using these statistics and the people who aren't using them as a comparison ought to be because they are the single best source of statistics for the United States. There's no evidence at all that births are missing from this database. There's no evidence at all that deaths are erroneously calculated. There's a high degree of reliability of this database and that's why this is the standard that everyone should be comparing their home birth statistics to.